Greetings, everyone. My name is Zatterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Treaty 2, The Siege of Mega City. Continuing on from the last episode, I'll now be paying a visit to the Mega City CPU to defend it. But before that, I'll be talking with all the NPCs here, as they always have something new to say at every new story beat. The CPU is to the north here, so let's use a motorcycle and get over there. And here's the usage of the Bright Beacon. There's a bonus item over here, and there's a bonus item right over here. I will get them in the future. And right over here, above the CPU center, is a huge spacecraft. Zero Prime, although I can't actually see where he is, as I can't tilt the camera upwards. I still can't see where he is. He probably hasn't spawned in yet. So he's the orchestrator of this entire rebellion. Oh, there he is. I see him now. Let me swap back over to the drill upgrade. Thankfully, we have base and Proto Man helping us. Base teleported away as he took too much damage. Zero Prime here has quite a series of crazy attacks. And some of his attacks can pierce through the buildings. Man teleported away as he took too much damage as well. And that was your prime. This will not be the last time I'll face him, he's probably the final boss. Can't access this yet as I don't have enough clearance. And I saw another teleporter nearby. On this side. A purple pink one. To board the starship, but of course that's end game. Meet with base. But before that, back to Dr. Light's lab for new story bits. He's missing. Oh. You interrupted Dr. Light's speech over there. On top of the mesa, south of the city. I still wonder what happened to those other planetary civilizations, or planetary colonies. And Proto Man does have a point. Did Zero Prime infect him with a virus? And Roll is in this machine. She's probably being upgraded. There are three other slots as well. Probably one for Mega Man and one for Proto Man. So now we know who the main antagonist of the game is and what we're working towards. The Mesa is just out of here, so the closest location is to use the Mines Teleporter, but I'll take the Scenic Route instead. And this time I'll take a slightly different route. Eventually I'll be able to access and complete all of these facilities. Getting around the city doesn't take that long, thankfully, especially when you have access to all these teleporters. I should have the Bright Beacon equipped here.
Oh, never mind. I kind of got it stuck over here. At least I didn't. It does take a short while for the Bright Beacon to expand enough. I don't see anything more, but there's probably something being obscured by the building. Just in case, I have a hunch there's a boss battle coming up. That's why I'm also keeping the motorcycle, for some extra armor. This was the place I pointed out earlier where I was a bit suspicious. I knew there was going to be a plot point or a cutscene here. Let's see what Base has to say. Well, they sort of are brothers. Activated on Wise penal satellite and ejected into space when the satellite was destroyed. Essentially what happened during the end game of Mega Man and Mega City, if you watch my LP. The Star Droids, from Rockman World 5 or Mega Man V for the Game Boy. So I guess in this game, the events of Mega Man V did not occur, this is an alternate universe. So they weren't destroyed. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit suspicious if those star droids didn't infect them. I find it hard to believe that they were able to convince all these robots to rebel. So of course, here's a boss battle against base. Let's call Portaman down. And here's Roll after being upgraded into a combat robot. So now we have the entire Rock family versus base. Or rather, the three Rock siblings versus base. With the Ring Boomerang, it isn't too challenging. But I can see doing this boss battle just using the Mega Buster being a bit of a problem because of how much base dashes around the place. and base escapes as well. I believe we'll fight him at least twice more during the game. Once more during the mid game, and finally during the end game, during the final stage in that spaceship. So we got the auto gun. Hold down to fire rapid shots, fires faster when using energy. So a hybrid between an infant use weapon and a special weapon. Like before, let's get back to Dr. Light's lab for a refill and see what they have to say. I'm not sure if he bought the story or he was getting frustrated that he couldn't wreck stuff. So that's our next objective, destroying 20 Roadmasters. That'll get us our next level of clearance. It's certainly a great feeling. I wish there were more Mega Man fan games and games for that matter where you could play as role. Something I forgot to point out during the last episode is that on the bottom right part of this menu screen, just above the number of Roadmasters you destroyed, those circles indicate your level of clearance. The orange one means I can use orange teleporters, and the blue one means I can use the blue teleporters. The one following that is I can't reach the color, then followed by green, then followed with the final purple sl slash pinkish one in order to access the starship, and probably some secrets. So we have a bunch of more locations that I can go through. Let's see, you know what? Let me go to the facility located to the north of here. I have plenty of options now. The game is opening up a lot. And over here is the factory. There is toxic waste spilled everywhere. I wonder if it's instant death like the molten metal in and outside the forges. You know, I can make that jump if I had a motorcycle. Wasn't there one nearby here? 
Let me take a look. It was probably in this room to the south. There it is. We have an energy upgrade and life upgrade. I greatly appreciate both, especially the latter. Oh, I didn't mean to summon Protoman there, whoops. I wanted the bright beacon. There is one over there, and probably one somewhere else. Does the Bright Beacon illuminate all bonus items, or just this one? Or just the tanks and life and weapon upgrades? Come on, shield attacker, please move. Alright, I'm gonna make this jump. That's one way to skip this platforming segment. And now I know that this is not instant death. And if this shield attacker wasn't there, I could have crossed the gap entirely. I still get the feeling I'm missing one somewhere. So I guess the shield attacker dropped this shield. Sure makes up for its nuisance. I will say that getting to Sir Lee's facilities are a lot more involved compared to Mega Man Mega City and Mega Man 3D. Then again, the reason for that is because this takes place in an open world. So I could have gone through the stage earlier as one of my first facilities. Let's see, we have three Roadmasters to dispatch of. I'll keep this equipped just in case. And it has a bunch of cogs as well. And I can't reach it yet. I need super jumping, or floating platforms. I'll give it one more shot. Wait, I can reach it. But then I can't exactly reach it. Nope, I need a higher jump. Let's proceed onwards. I will go for the D-Tank right now. Can I make it though? Not quite. Can I jump onto the cog though? I'll give it one try, then I'll proceed onwards normally. I can, but these do rotate a bit. And there's our E-Tank. It's faster dying here than jumping back. Can I see what's to the right here? I 
I know I can reach this as well. We're upping the ante here. At least the conveyor belts were introduced in a relatively safer environment compared to the other gimmicks in this game. Still would have preferred a safer room instead of over a bombless pit. And that was my bad. Um, I guess I was too close to the edge there too. So there's an E-Tank here. A giant spinning cog now. I get the impression that one of the bosses of this facility is Metal Man, judging by the conveyor belt and all these gears. That was strange. Well, I guess I can't access this boss then. So, time to backtrack. Couldn't make the jump. For one of the intro facilities, this is looking to be okay. I mean, most of the enemies aren't that difficult to dispatch of. Nothing more to say here. I wish the bright beacon actually showed an on-screen counter, as some of these light beams can be obscured by the walls. I can either go to the left or go to the north. The north is locked, so let me go to the left first. Actually, no, let me go to the north first. I didn't mean to go over here. Well, I went to the west end, so I guess I'm gonna explore this area. Then I'll double back and check out the north. I already know that I have to go back to three facilities, so I can actually cover one more boss in each one of them. We're nearing the boss and a lot more gears. There's something over there.
Well, this pad here is not that difficult. I'll have to double back here as well. And a lot of presses, even more like middleman's level. I'm thankful that the rainbow rays can seek upwards a bit. So our boss is in fact Metal Man. And he has a pretty small health bar, so I guess he was intended to be one of the base bosses players would face. So let's make it fair and use a Mega Buster. At least a little bit more fair. And I'm gonna die, no. I started with too low health in the first place. He fights the same way as he did in Mega Man Treaty. Although there are a lot more conveyor belts here, so it makes it a bit more challenging. In fact, trying to jump in charge is a bit difficult here. In a way, he feels like a easier version of Ringman. See, if I relied on only the Mega Buster pellets, this would be a lot easier. Gear shot. Shoots gears that deflect off of walls. So exactly like in Mega Man 3D. I'd rather use the ring shot by this point in the game. Unless this is stronger against certain bosses. So let's backtrack a bit and defeat the second boss. I'll backtrack again over here so I can recollect that extra tank. So in order to unlock the door to the north, I need to get up here, to the top of this structure.
frankly, I feel this is one of those games where the controls would be better if we actually controlled Mega Man's rotation using the mouse. That way it'd be a lot more precise. In fact, this issue was fixed in Lion Waite's future trilogy of Zelda fan games, which I may or may not cover on this channel in the future. They are certainly interesting, although they are a bit rough. And we have a room filled with all of these rotating cogs that spin around and move upwards and downwards. So it's essentially the climax of this stage. Thing is though, it can be a bit difficult seeing where you're oriented at. I'm trying to play it safe here, but all these changes in camera angles are a bit disorienting. My main strategy through this segment is to jump towards the centers of these cogs, so the columns. That way you can align yourself. And yet I wasn't close enough. I thought it was closer, but in reality it wasn't. That's what I don't like about this section. I see, I need to jump on top of this one. For a moment there, I thought I wouldn't make it. But I made it with... Okay, what just happened? I thought I was going to hit the ground there, but I clipped through and slid off the platform. And our boss here is Top Man. And to be a bit fair, I'm just going to use the multi-shot, so I don't just completely destroy the boss. Frankly, in several ways, this encounter is easier than in Mega Man 3. If this arena was smaller, this would be a lot more of a pain. But I can easily dodge most of his attacks here. Ground rolling weapon that can drop on enemies from above. And bounces around the place. That's fun to look at. So as I said, it's time to get that extra E or L tank. It's closer to the outside, so let's use this instead. The spinning tops look to be a rather situational weapon though. In fact, in some ways I feel a top spin would be a better weapon in this game, considering how many enemies try getting up close and personal to you. Having a melee weapon like that would be super handy.
The bouncing does help, but I need to be at a higher elevation. Still, I would have preferred if it was introduced in a safer environment. Oh sure, the starting room of this facility had a bunch of them, but I wish there was a room that forced you to use them, and actually was over safe ground. So close. I was worried I was going to overshoot that I ended up undershooting. Again, the camera is one of the biggest problems of this game, especially with some of the angles. I don't see any more bonus items unless I overlook some, so let's go back to Dr. Light's lab and do a quick refill. Actually, this is a good time to end off this episode, as it's going past 30 minutes long. The factory was an interesting place, but just like with the mines and the other facilities, they really need to work on the introduction of all the gimmicks. So in the next part, I'll be going to the next facility located in the northern half of the city. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!